<laughs> the fourth fader for today is loyalty to world. And it goes from playability to plausibility. And what does loyalty to world mean? It means that if you decide to do a LARP in a specific time period or with a specific groups of people, then with that choice comes the consequences of that there follows a world with specific rules and specific ways that people work in that world. So if you want to represent that as precisely as possible, you will go towards the plausibility side of the fader. But if you want to go in and look at each element of that world and change, change some of that to make it more playable, then you are going to the top of the fader. So plausibility, the world should work properly. It should work the way it works. Playability, the lab should work as well as possible. And these two values can be in conflict. What is best for the lab makes no sense for the world. So the question you need to ask yourself is how accurately do you want to represent the world? And an example of if you go to a design process where you want to do a lab, a military lab, if you choose to work with the military or the world of military organizations, certain rules will apply. There's a hierarchy, so the generals, they uh, decide what the colonels do, and they decide what the majors do, and they decide what the lieutenants do, and they decide what the privates do, right? And if you are like a regular soldier, you have no control over your actions, you can't ever make your own decisions, you'll always have to ask for what do I need to do next. So you do and you do as you're told. If you do not do as you're told, you will be put in prison or maybe executed. It depends on, of course, which military you're in and which time period you're in. And you have to ask permission for everything from going to the restroom or sleeping. And this can be extremely boring in a lab. For example, if you as a soldier is asked to guard the toilet alone for eight hours, that might be great to sort of immerse into the experience of being a guard watching the important toilet. <laughs> for, for me, that would probably be like six minutes and then I'll be really extremely bored and I wouldn't be in the lab anymore. I'll be thinking about what a groceries I would have to buy on Monday and so on. It, of course, differs from person to person. Um, but there's, of course, you can either decide that this has to be a plausible military system, so the players just have to deal with that. Or you can say, I want to give the experience of guarding the toilet, but maybe not do it realistically. So there are fixes to this problem. Uh, so you can, if it is the military world, you can choose to have what uh, has been in some games been called extreme delegation. So for example, if I played the general and my lieutenants, I would say to them before the game, you make up whatever decisions you want to do. And if it ever comes up, I will say that I made that decision and gave the order. So that will give freedom for all players to do what they want, but the system of military would still be sort of in place because I would, as the higher ranking officer, confirm that this was an order that was given. Another rule could be no tasks takes longer than an hour. So if I gave Jakob the order to guard the toilet, he would only have to do it for an hour and he would know that it would take an hour and it's way easier to do a task if you know for how long it will go and when you can leave. Of course, this demands then I put another person to guard the toilet if it is that important. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. So that is a, a way to sort of look at if you want the plausible side, then 
eight hours guarding toilet. If not, then there are mechanics and rules that you can put into your lab to make it more playable. So in the Fader Max of playability, you can impl implement fun mechanics. So you can, you can work with different uh, tools to make it more playable. And as in my example, you can remove all the boring play. Uh, as in Jakob's example about you don't design for what is happening through the night. Maybe everybody is sleeping, but you still have somebody on guard duty all alone. And that, you know, is really intensely boring, so you can move that. And also you can break out of stereotyping. So an example, a stereotype is something that we in the world simplify and then we continue to uh, replicate that thing because it's easier for us to see. So for example, a football hooligan is a stereotype or a, a, a racist uh, man in the American South in the 1850s. Uh, if we add playability, we have, have the we have the option of changing stuff that we do not like in the real world into something that makes more sense for everybody. So it could be that, for example, in Snaphane, in many military cultures, you would not see a woman in a position at all. It is often only men who are soldiers. But in Snaphane, the decision has been made that any, any gender can play any character. So that is moving it towards the playability side. The minor side is, of course, that it is not true to the world you want to portray, and it can make the, hard lava to, the, the lab harder to understand. If you change a lot of the stuff that we normally do in our real world and understand, because that's the way we do it, then it becomes more difficult to, to understand. At plausibility, the game world makes sense. It's the opposite of the thing I mentioned before. Everything is as is, and you do the way that you know that the world works. It increases realism, which can be a very good thing if you want a very realistic game, and you want to uh, step into a game world to explore how it was to live uh, in the 1600s in the Vatican, then if the world is very plausible, then you will get a deeper insight to how that world actually was. It can be very difficult to maintain, because, for example, if we're playing something a thousand years ago and you want to portray that as accurately as possible, then our modern world needs, like getting coffee, which did not exist, let's say, in Europe uh, in the year 1000, uh, will af affect the game and it can give you problems with the flow of the thing because the to maintain that plausible world gets increasingly difficult. It can be boring, I already said that a couple of times, and there's many many restrictions to your design. So if you choose to have a very plausible world, it will uh, give you uh, it will choose for you and decide for you many of the design options you have because if you if the one of the top uh, themes of your lab is to have it very plausible that will decide a lot of stuff for you that you feel you cannot change and as long as you are conscious that this is what you want then it is absolutely okay, just inform your players that this is the way it's going to be and it is intended to be that way. So um, if you design a game, for example, uh, where women have a, only have a specific part of the lab that they can be in, say uh, it is not possible for women to go anywhere without company, uh, then you most definitely has to dis have to design play where women can, can actually play together, lab together. Because if you use all the design on doing stuff where they have to be accompanied by somebody else, 
then most of the women will have a boring time during the love. Does that make sense? Cool. Thank you.